Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on LiDAR with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with the College of Natural Resources and Environment at Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and GeoTED UAS. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. The prior chapter covered creating surface constraints in a LAST dataset. This chapter covers using surface constraints in analysis by demonstrating the creation of a digital elevation model, or DEM. We'll compare a DEM with and without surface constraints. We do not cover optimal surface constraints or method choices for creating a DEM. For that discussion, please consult the appropriate academic literature and or project instructions. Begin with the Chapter 23 project and add a new scene. To the scene, we've added the Mesa County last dataset that includes all six tiles and the Lakes Surface Constraints feature class. And if you like, you can also add the building's surface constraints for reference purposes. Let's turn on ground points only for the last dataset. We're going to begin with no active surface constraints. So go to Properties, Surface Constraints, and uncheck any constraints that are checked in this list. These are the surface constraints that we added in Chapter 23. If none are showing for you, that's fine. The surface constraints will be changed as we proceed in this chapter. And close this box. Now let's create a 10 meter digital elevation model with no surface constraints because we've turned them off using the last data set to raster tool. I've named the output raster DEM10 underscore no SC for no surface constraints and accepted all of the other default values. And let's run the tool. Here we see the DEM has loaded into the contents. Let's go ahead and turn off the lakes and turn off the last data set and change the symbology for this DEM to elevation number one and a standard deviation stretch. And let's zoom into the lake. Now we see that the lake is visible and the feeder streams are visible. Now let's run an example with surface constraints. Let's check to see that the lakes is already added as a surface constraint with a hard erase. And if not, here's a refresher from chapter 23. So for convenience, let's go over to catalog and be sure you have a folder access to the last data set, which I do as you can see here. If not, you can just add folder up here. So let's right click on the last data set, go to properties, surface constraints, and you can see that I have the lakes here with a hard erase. Remember that we created this constraint feature class in chapter 23 and stored it in the geodatabase for that project. If you don't see it here, you can add it at this point and choose the surface constraint from your geodatabase here, make your height source none and your surface type hard erase. Since I already have it here, I'm just going to cancel out of this. And then I'm going to go back to my scene so I can turn it on. So I'm going to go to the last data set, properties, and I'm going to turn the lakes on and click on OK. I'm going to turn off this first den so that we can see the next one when it comes in and rerun the last data set to raster tool. I gave it a new name, DEM10 underscore SC for surface constraints. I'm going to leave all of the other default settings and hit run. Here we see the result. The image initially displayed in grayscale, but I've changed the symbology as in the first DEM to elevation number one and standard deviation stretch and omitted all of that in this video because we are going to do it over and over again. This demonstration illustrates what happens when there is no elevation value in the feature class and a hard erase is used. There's a hole where the lake is located. The tool was instructed to erase any values within the lake's polygon. Let's see what happens if we clip instead by changing the surface type to soft clip. Remember to go to catalog, surface constraints, and we're going to remove the current surface constraint 
and add it back. with the soft clip surface type. And we'll add it here and OK. Now we'll go back to the scene and we'll turn it on. And then we'll run the raster tool again. I've named the new output raster surface constraints underscore dem 10. Keep all the defaults and run. Here we see the tool clip the DEM to the extent of the lake's feature class. So to summarize, erase removes all the data within the polygon like we did here. It leaves a hole in the resulting DEM where the polygon is located. A clip does the opposite. It removes all of the data outside of the polygon, so the shape that is left is that of the lake itself. Let's see what happens if there's an elevation field in the surface constraint feature class. We'll do this by adding a new field to the lakes feature class and giving it an elevation value. Let's open the attribute table for the lakes feature class and add a field called water bottom elevation. I'll abbreviate here. Water BTM E L E. Make it numeric. Save. Go back to our attribute table and calculate the field. And we want the water bottom elevation to be 5100. And apply just to watch it populate. And OK. So now I'm going to go ahead and close these tables. And as usual, I'm going to remove the existing lake's surface constraint, add a new one with the height source at water and bottom ELE, and the surface type at hard replace. Remember that most of the lake is missing LiDAR points. A lake's bottom is not necessarily level, but remember this is a reservoir, a man-made lake meant to hold water. It was excavated, and likely the original bottom depth was uniform when built. And since it's just one polygon, only one depth value or bottom elevation can be used. Don't forget to activate the constraints. and run the last data set to raster tool. This time we'll name the output raster hr underscore dem10 and run the tool. After changing the symbology for the resulting dem, you can see the lake is all one color because all of the raster values for the lake are the same. There is one final demonstration you should go through in your text using hard value fill. In this chapter, we strictly demonstrated the step-by-step -step process in using surface constraints. There are additional surface constraint types and other GIS products that can be generated with surface constraints and a last data set that we did not demonstrate. So when should surface constraints be used? Well, that depends on the parameters of the project, or in the case of new research, the academic literature. This is the last of the videos in the video series. Thank you for watching.